the hidden purpose of my workspace in Microsoft Loop is not what you'd expect. Today, I will explain my workspace and how you can integrate it with other workspaces to organize your digital content. We will finish off with some tips so that you can get the most out of Microsoft Loop. Before we jump in, I first wanted to take a moment to explain what Loop is. If you are familiar with Microsoft Loop, then feel free to skip ahead to this time here. Microsoft Loop is a collaborative app, and some people say that it looks similar to Notion, while some Microsoft users have replaced their OneNote with Microsoft Loop. For me, I have been using OneNote for over 15 years, but now, since Microsoft Loop was released in 2023, I almost use it exclusively. Microsoft Loop can be accessed from the app launcher in any of your 365 apps and is organized into workspaces that have pages and sub pages so that you can organize your digital content. It has a modern and minimalistic design with no visible toolbars so that you can focus on the task at hand. By the way, my name is Amy, and these are 10 things that you need to know to organize your own workspace in Microsoft Loop. So let's nerd out. First, we will look at my workspace. And if you have a Microsoft business account, then you will notice a new workspace has been added in Microsoft Loop. First, we will look at what this is because the hidden purpose is not what you would expect. And then we will look at how we can use it. At a glance, you might think that my workspace is similar to your own personal OneNote notebook, providing that dedicated space to organize your own personal content. But this workspace already has a bunch of pages in here and I haven't added any of those. And the reason is because the intended purpose for my workspace is to provide a place to automatically store your Copilot pages. So if you plan to use my workspace to organize your digital content, then this is going to turn into a huge mess because pages are automatically added here. So now let's take a look at how this actually works so that we can use it to our own advantage. To see how Copilot Pages integrates with my workspace, let's take a look at them side by side. So here we will go to Copilot Chat and we will prompt Copilot to help us prepare for a work ski trip to Japan, give us five key highlights. So we can see that Copilot is drafting an itinerary for us. And at the bottom here, we have edit in pages. When we select that, then we will see that a new page has been added to my workspace. So anytime that you create a page from a Copilot chat, that will automatically be added to your my workspace in Microsoft Loop. Let's expand this window here. And now we can see the Copilot page alongside Copilot chat. And within the page, we can actually start to edit the content that Copilot has generated for us. And if we press the at sign, then we can mention a team member. We just need to share the document with them by clicking on that little plus icon. So here is an example of that email notification that is sent to the team member when you mention them in a loop page. And now we can start to collaborate with our team members in real time. So this is one of the most powerful features of Microsoft Loop. Back in my workspace, we can see that this page has also updated here. Now we can go and add new pages to this workspace to add additional content but because every time that you create a page from Copilot, new content is going to automatically be added in here and it is going to turn into a huge mess. So what I recommend doing 
is creating a new workspace. And then I will show you how we can seamlessly integrate my workspace pages into that new workspace. Let's go new workspace. We will give this a name and we can also add a fun emoji. If your organization uses sensitivity labels, then you could define that here. And because this workspace is going to primarily be for myself, I'm not going to share it with anybody, but I will show you how we can share loop components from that workspace later. Next, you can add additional content to your workspace, but let's start off with a clean slate. So here is our workspace. And if we go back to the home page, then we can hover over our new workspace, select the ellipses, and then we can go favorite. This is now going to add your new workspace to the left-hand navigation for easy access. And if you want to change the photo here, then we can go rename and style and then update the cover photo. You can select any of these covers and then update. Next, we will learn how we can add structure to our new workspace. And in this demonstration, we will use the para method, which has been coined by Chiago Forte. And I'm really hoping that I got that pronunciation correct. A quick pause in today's video to say that my ebook, Navigating Microsoft Passages, is available for free for you to download. Inside, you will find a treasure map to help you navigate Microsoft 365 apps with confidence so that you can increase your productivity and efficiency and reclaim your time for meaningful work. I will include a link at the end of this tutorial as well as in the description of this one. So be sure to check it out and grab your copy today. Let's add a page for projects. So here we can organize our projects that have a clearly defined goal. And at the top, we can select add an icon. Let's go for a little rocket ship. And then now below that, we can add a new sub page. So let's go Japan ski trip. And here we will once again add an icon. This time we can add a snowboarder. Now let's add another page for area. So area is for areas of your work that have an ongoing process with them. We'll quickly add a little icon here. And now I'm just going to collapse our projects and then reorder that to below. Within the area, we can, for example, add a new sub page. We can call this monthly review. And then again, we can add a new sub page here. So this time, let's now go to the template gallery and we can add a template for retrospective, which is quite fitting for a monthly review. And now we can use our template. At the top, we can simply update this title to March. Let's now add a new page for resources. And resources provide quick access to items that you are interested in. Once again, we will just move this down below here. And now, this time, we are going to go create new, and we are going to say link. So here, I'm going to add a link to a para blog post that has provided me with some productivity tips for organizing my loop workspace. Now we can see that that web URL has been added as a loop page. So we can select that and then hold it over top of this resources section to make it a sub page. And just to demonstrate how that works, when we select that page, then we will be redirected to the web page, providing you with quick access to your important resources. The second A in para is for archive. So here we can once again drag and drop this down below. So we will see that we have P A R A. Now the archive is used to clear out the clutter from these 
other three areas. So when you are finished with something, but you may want to access it in the future, then you can simply drag and drop items to the archive area. Now there is a recycle bin at the bottom of Microsoft Loop, but content here is automatically deleted after 93 days. So by storing your old pages into this archive area, then you can easily reference them in the future. Next, I'm going to show you how we can seamlessly integrate our Copilot pages into our new workspace. For example, it would be really helpful to add that page that we just created to our Japan ski trip project area. So what we can do is go to my workspace and then you can locate the page that you just created. From here, we can select the ellipses and then go add to workspace and you can assign it to a new workspace. So we can see that it has now been added. And if we navigate to that workspace, we will see that it has been linked to the top here. So let's select that page. And now we can call it five highlights. And now we can drag and drop that into the Japan ski trip area. I'm just going to add a little map emoji. And when we go back into my workspace, you will notice that that has also updated. So they are now seamlessly integrated and you can now access those Copilot pages in an organized way in your own personal workspace. Next, we will learn how we can format our pages. For example, there is no ribbon like we may be familiar with with other applications such as Microsoft Word or even OneNote. So let's add a header for the research cost and you'll notice that when we select text that a formatting bar appears. So we can give this a header too. In addition to that, we can create a little checklist for these different research items for our budget. So if we select the ellipses, then we can now go down to headings and lists. And here we can add a bullet list, a numbered list, or even a checklist. And just notice all of the shortcut keys on the right hand side. So I'm going to click out of here, select everything again, and then now go control and one. And now we have a nice checklist that we can easily work through. Next, I want to add a table to our page. So we can press the forward slash button on your keyboard. And then here are all of the different items that we can add to our page. For example, let's insert a table and we can rename this first column budget and the second column we will call amount. Now for the amount column, I'm going to select the drop down arrow in the header and then go change column type. So here we can select a number and then now when we enter amounts into this table, you will notice that we have a sum total at the bottom, but you could also view this as an average or even a count. Another common forward slash command is the progress tracker. So we can simply press forward slash and then start to type what we are looking for. Now this defaults to a table view, but we can select the drop down here and then go to a board view. So this is a great way for you to track a routine process where you have individual items on cards and organized by categories. The final forward slash command that I want to show you is the task list. Now this is a super powerful tool because items that you add here will sync with your planner or Microsoft to do. So you can assign yourself, you can include a due date, and then you can view these in Microsoft Planner or To Do. Next, I want to show you how we can create a loop component from this budget table and share it with a team member. So we can select this little grid icon 
and then go create loop component. So now we can copy this loop component and then we can paste it either into a Microsoft Teams chat or even an email or a OneNote notebook. And all of the content updated within that loop component will update in real time across all of your 365 apps. For more tips on using Microsoft Loop, then you can check out this video here.